Well, hello and welcome back to my channel. It's Salisa coming to you from the channel Beautifully Me and You. And today I thought I'd bring you another What I Eat in a Day. This video has quite a bit of recipes. It will be a voiceover video. You guys seem to like that last time and it makes it really convenient when filming to just put it together and put a voiceover over it. Couple of things. One is I have an Instagram at www.salisa. I'll put a picture of it here on the screen. Feel free to come join me over there in my Instagram family. It's growing by leaps and bounds and I try to post at least once a day some ideas that you can use on your journey. The other thing is if you're not subscribed to my channel, think about subscribing. I would love to have you as a part of the family here on YouTube as well. And if you like the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. It helps for the video to be suggested to others who also might need the inspiration. Feel free to comment. I love to speak to you guys down in the comments. And of course, share the video as much as you'd like. Okay, so as for me, I'm on the Weight Watcher Blue program and I get 30 points per day. And in this video, you'll see exactly how I budgeted those 30 points. So let's get into the video. To get started with breakfast, we're gonna be using some of the Maple Grove sugar-free syrup and kosher salt. We're also gonna use a half a cup of quick oats, and that will be four points. The egg will be zero points. The banana, zero points. I'll also be using a half a teaspoon of bacon powder, and then a fourth of a teaspoon of ground cinnamon. Those are all zero points. And I'll be dressing it with a few blueberries for zero points. To get started, it's pretty easy. We're just gonna put all the dry ingredients into a blender, and that'll include the oats, the cinnamon, the bacon powder, and the pinch of salt. And we're gonna grind that up until it becomes like a fine powder. After that, we'll just add our wet ingredients, which will be the one egg, as well as the ripe banana. And then blend just a little bit longer until it becomes a smooth consistency that we'll then put into our pan. Once you have your batter all blended, boy, that's a tongue twister, spray the pan with a little bit of Pam and then go ahead and put your pancakes. I was able to make three smaller pancakes out of this recipe. And so here I am just putting them into the skillet. Once I got them into the skillet, then I went ahead and placed the blueberries onto each pancake. I used about six blueberries per pancake. And now it comes time to flip. If you've seen my previous video, I'm not the best flipper, but <laughs> no matter what, the pancakes came out tasty. So here I am flipping all of them. They have the nice golden color that I like. And that's it. Breakfast is served once they're completely cooked. I serve mine with two pieces of Publix bacon, which is one point per slice for a total of two points. I also use some of the Maple Grove Farms sugar-free syrup on top, and the pancakes themselves were just four points. And then I served it also with a half a grapefruit for zero points. So my oatmeal, banana, blueberry, pancake breakfast is a total of only six points. Well, now it's lunchtime. For today's lunch, I'm gonna be using some Sargento's aged Swiss cheese, one slice is two points. I'm also gonna use a tablespoon of this honey mustard. That's gonna be zero points by the time I actually use it. And then I'm using one Olay Extreme Wellness Wrap. These are life and they're only one point. I'm also gonna be using about an ounce of the Boar's Head Rotisserie Seasoned Chicken Breast that's zero points. And then I'm also gonna be using two ounces of this Boar's Head Smoke Uncured Ham, and that's gonna be one point. To get started, we're gonna heat up a skillet, and I'm gonna first preheat the meats. So I'm using a tiny bit of pan, and then I'm putting in my turkey breast, or chicken breast, excuse me, as well as the two ounces of ham. And I'm gonna let these warm up so that they can help to melt the cheese whenever the whole sandwich is put together.
Once you have all your meat stacked, it's pretty easy to assemble. We're gonna take one of the Olay wraps and here I am spreading some of the honey mustard on. Now I thought I needed the whole tablespoon, which would be one point, but as you'll see, once I started spreading, it was quite a bit of honey mustard. So I took more than half of it off and ended up counting it as zero points. So you spread that out and then you put your one piece of aged Swiss cheese right in the middle and then you lay on your meats. Whose cat is that? Look at that cat. Just begging for some meat. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Anyway, I'm folding in all of the sides of the Olay wrap to make like a little pocket. And then I'm gonna take it just like this and place it face down into the skillet so it can brown. And so I thought in order to help crisp it up, I'll put a plate down to give it some weight and kind of create like a press and press it all together. But as you'll see here, when I flipped it, it just didn't seem to be browning the way that I want. And maybe there's something in my mind that just believes you need a little bit of butter to create a little bit of brownness. Well, in comes the butter. I'm gonna count this for about a teaspoon, which is two points. So I melted it and put it on one side, flipped it over to the other side, so it can get nice, brown, and crunchy the way that I was expecting it to be. And it worked. <laughs> it got nice and brown and crunchy, and I let the other side brown up as well and then lunch was served. That's the beauty of Weight Watchers. You really can use two of your points just for a little bit of butter to give you the taste that you're looking for. And so for lunch, I'm calling this a chicken cordon bleu press sandwich. And it was only two points for the cheese, two points for the butter, one point for the ham, and one point for the Olay wrap. Don't it look great, y'all? It tastes just as good. I serve mine with cherries and grapes, and it's a total of a six-point lunch. Okay, now it's time for dinner. I'm using some of this great value thin-sliced, boneless, skinless chicken breast, and I did a little bit of prep on them in the morning, and that's just because I found that with boneless, skinless chicken breasts, especially the frozen ones, they're best if they're kind of left to marinate in some seasoning. They don't even need a lot of oil or extra things. So I'm putting some of this Badia lemon pepper, some Badia's complete seasoning, A little bit of the Badia rotisserie chicken seasoning, quite a bit of that. And then some Tony's original Creole seasoning. That one has salt, so go lightly on that one. Anyway, then I close this freezer bag up and I kind of just shake the chicken around and sit them in the refrigerator so that they can then marinate. Now to get started with dinner, I'm gonna use some of this chicken stock as well as those marinated chicken breasts that have defrosted in the refrigerator after all day. We're gonna start with just a pot and I'm gonna add that chicken broth to the pot. Now I had about, I'm gonna say a cup and a half worth of chicken stock. So I went ahead and added about equal parts water. And then I just put the chicken in and allowed that to boil on low medium heat for about 30 minutes or until it looked done. In the meantime, I thought I'd use some kosher salt, complete seasoning and black pepper with an avocado to make some guacamole. And this is pretty simple guacamole. I'm only gonna be eating about a fourth of the avocado. I'm 
I'm cutting up a whole half of an avocado and I'm gonna show you how I save the rest of the guacamole for the next day. It's like a little trick that you can use too. But for right now, super simple, just mashing up the avocado and then I'm gonna add the seasonings to taste. Now, to keep your guacamole from getting all brown and yucky, super simple. Just smash it out into an even layer and then pour some water on top. The water is gonna block the air from oxidizing the guacamole. And I've ate it like this after several days even. All you do before you serve is pour the water off and stir it. Next, I'm gonna be making a little bit of salsa. So I'm starting with some pickled jalapenos because I didn't have any fresh, a can of Rotel tomatoes, some black pepper, onion, tomato, and cilantro. And then I'm going to be using a little bit of those same seasonings, complete seasoning, salt, and pepper. It's really simple, but it levels up your Mexican just that much more. So to begin, I'm just going to put everything chopped up into my little portable food processor. Once you have everything combined, you just put your lid on. Doesn't it look so pretty and colorful? All of these items are zero points. I just take it to my blender machine and actually blend. This salsa makes quite a bit, so I'll be able to eat on this for the next few days with chips and salsa. Or better yet, some good thins and salsa. If you haven't tried it, you should. Now that the chicken is done boiling, I'm just gonna pour off some of the water and use the two fork method to go ahead and shred it. And now we'll be making our rolled tacos. So I'm using this La Banderita white corn shell tacos. And I'm gonna be using two teaspoons of oil. Now the two teaspoons of oil is three points and the two corn tortillas are three points. The chicken is zero point and the quarter cup of avocado that I'll be using is three points. So first, let me make the roe tacos and then I'll show you how I dress them. This is where things got a little bit hot, but well worth it. I went ahead and rolled them up and then fried them until they became crispy on both sides. To serve the roe tacos, I had them with some refried beans. So the refried beans, one fourth of a cup is two points. I went ahead and put some down. I didn't exactly measure. It might be a little a bit over a fourth of a cup. Nevertheless, it was delicious. So I put down my beans and then to dress the rolled tacos, I took a little bit of that homemade salsa and put on the top of each of the rolled tacos. And remember, the salsa is zero points. And then I went ahead and added some of the guacamole. Now don't forget, the water was sitting right on top. I'm just gonna pour that off and then stir up the guacamole and it'll be just like new. 
and to store the other half, I'm gonna do the same thing. Just put a little water on it and then put it into the refrigerator with a lid and then come back the next day and stir it up. So I'm using about half and put a dollop of guacamole onto both of my rolled tacos. The last and final step, I'm gonna use a little bit of the Faye Greek yogurt. This has become my sour cream replacement and I put a dollop of that and that's it. For the rolled tacos with salsa and guacamole and sour cream with a side of beans, the total for this dinner is 11 points. And my day wouldn't be complete without dessert. That's right. Somebody on Instagram put me up on these and if it was you, please remind me who told me of these delicious butter pecan yazo bars. They are life and they're only four points. Buttery with bits of nuts in them. I'm telling you, so worth the four points. I save it every night just for one. Anyway, that's all I have for today. I hope you guys enjoyed. Take care.